this is how he's raising him. It has that effect. As I said, the reason I mentioned this, so that we all can benefit, and especially children can benefit from it, that if we get anything from our parents, we should be ready to get, accept all of what we get from our parents. He used to make so much dua for his parents, so much dua for his father, that for he says for each and every time that he beat me, and each and every hit I got from him, I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will raise his status for that. Hadith Rahmatullahi Alayhi says, I never used to get chance to go home and spend time with my mother. Mother used to live in another town. This young boy is living with his father. One day my father called me and he said, Son, would you like to go and spend Eid with your mother? Eid. Have Eid with your mother? I said, yes. And I started celebrating for the rest of Ramadan that this Eid I will be with my mother. Imagine what will be the happiness of the child who knows that I will be spending Eid with my mother. I don't know if you have experienced anything like this. I have experienced it. Not in that manner but in different way. And I'll tell you my experience. If you heard there was once In Saudi Arabia, they made a mistake at the beginning of Ramadan, and therefore at the end of the Ramadan they announced that after 28 days we made a mistake at the beginning, so now Eid will be on the 29th day of Ramadan, which simply means that is the first of Shawwal, and then we will have to make up for one day, because the mistake was made at the beginning. Anyone can make a mistake. And this is the right ruling, that after 28 days they see the side of the moon, so they announced that at the beginning, well, we have made a mistake. So today we will have Eid and we will make up for this, for one fast after Eid. Whole family was in Mecca and I'm in Medina. And we plan to leave after Fajr and as we are leaving, we're stationed somewhere and that person says, Eid Mubarak. I said, what are you talking about? It's only 20 days, 28 days of uh, Ramadan. He says, no, they announced that they made a mistake. So therefore now we're having Eid. Had no choice but to go back to Medina with my older brother. And believe me, throughout the day, tears are falling off my eyes that I'm doing it without my family, without my parents. Doing Eid without them is not that easy. And especially at that age. He says, now I would have had the opportunity, I will be doing Eid with my mother. On the night of Eid, he called me. He says, Zakaria, what are you going to do there? There is no need to go there. Spend the time here. He says, I couldn't say anything but tears. I had no control over my tears that are falling continuously. They were showering of my eyes. And throughout the time I'm crying, I perform Salatul Eid and still tears are falling off my eyes. And that day I cried so much that my eyes turned red. They were swollen. He looks at my eyes, doesn't say anything. He just looks. Father, of course, out of all, he has mercy. But... He, at the same time, wants to teach his children something that others don't have. Next day he says, he called me and he said to me, Zakaria, I was really planning to send you. But when I saw you celebrating so much, I thought this is not a good quality. Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ali says, since that day I understood the message of the ayah, لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاتَكُمْ Do not grieve of what you miss and do not be happy and arrogant of what you get. I really got the message of the ayah. That whatever I miss anymore, that's it. I don't feel bad about it. I understood what Allah means here. Tarbiyah. Raising the children in the right manner. Since it's a topic we have been talking about, let me just mention one more thing from the time of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een that just came to my memory at this time. We know Abu Sufyan was the leader of the Kuffar of Quraysh. His wife 
had so much animosity against Islam that we all know if we have <laughs> studied the seerah and the history of Islam, you know that she was just planning, day and night, planning to hurt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She is the one who assigned Wahshi radiallahu anhu to kill Hamza radiallahu anhu. And then you know what she did after that. Cut his ears, cut his nose, and whatsoever she did. So it shows her animosity against Islam. That is a family in which as soon as you, stand, you enter that door, the only thing you hear is, how can we hurt Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Plotting, planning against Islam. Day and night, you will hear these things over there. A child is being raised over there, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. At certain age, this child who's raised over there in that house, hearing all of that day and night, all of a sudden he decides that he would like to become Muslim. What made him think about it? It's a very important question. I don't like to narrate the stories just as a story and for fun. We need to take our lessons from them. What made this child think about it? Again, I would say something that went on when he was raising, at the time when he was growing up, something that he had seen in his life that changed all of his thoughts about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was that? He says when they captured Hubayb radiallahu anhu, And the day came when they decided that they are going to kill Hubayb radiallahu anhu. As they put Hubayb radiallahu anhu on the cross, Hubayb started making dua against the kuffar that are present over there and killing him. Allahumma ahsihim adada. Ya Allah, keep the exact count of each and every one of them and destroy all of them. Do not leave a single hour of them. The kuffar of Quraysh had a belief that if a virtuous man makes a dua, that dua is always accepted. And the way of protecting yourself against the effect of that dua is you lay down on the ground. Lay flat on the ground, you will be protected against the effect of the dua. This was their belief. Muawiyah, the young boy, sees his father heading all the kuffar. And he is the one who is doing all of those things. And as soon as Khubayb raises his hands to make that dua, he says, my father pushed me hard on the ground so that I'm laying flat on the ground, I won't be affected by that dua. While I'm laying on the ground, I'm thinking to myself, if really my father means what he says at home, then why is he afraid about the dua of Khubayb? He must know that Khubayb is on the right track and we are wrong. This is why he's afraid of the dua of Khubayb. He says, that since that day I realized that Islam is the true deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then finally the day came when I decided I would like to become Muslim. Here it's a very, very important point for us to learn that when we tell our children lying is haram, cheating is haram, and all of those lists of haram, and then someone calls home or someone is knocking at the door and you tell your own son, go and tell him dad is not home. Saying is different than the action. We say something we do something opposite. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu hears all of those things at home from his father, from his mother, from his uncles, from his brothers and sisters. Everyone is talking about something, but the action is totally opposite than that. They really, through their action, they are proving that they believe in the truthfulness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that action was the thing that affected this young boy. So Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi. We see how he was raised. What type of tirbiyah he went through in his childhood. 
And accordingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him to be the main, the, 